Hello, I'm Colonel Doug Merritt, Command Inspector General for the Southern European Task Force Africa, or CTAFAF. I'm Major Amity Felice, the Assistance, Inspections, and Engagements Chief for CTAFAF. And I am Star First Class Amika Anderson, Inspector General Non-Commissioned Officer for CTAFAF. In DBD number one, we provided an overview of the assistance function. It included how to use the Inspector General Assistance Process, or IGAP, and some key tips to applying it. In this video, my team will review the IGAP and walk you through an example of how we conduct an assistance case. It's important to understand that there are different types of assistant cases, and the finance issue presented in this video simply demonstrates the process. Inspectors General conduct four functions, assistance, investigations, inspections, and teaching and training. Each function plays a key role in ensuring the readiness of our forces and holding people and units accountable to laws, regulations, and policies. The assistance function that we will discuss in this video is a reactive measure that has immediate positive impacts on individual soldier readiness and quality of life and service and unit readiness as soldiers free of issues are able to focus on the difficult missions we require them to perform. In the CTAF Inspector General Training DVD number one, video number eight assistance, we discussed the basics of the U.S. Army IG Assistant Function. If you did not receive copies of the first DVD and would like to, please contact the Security Corporation Office and the U.S. Embassy in your country and request the CTAF AF IG Training DVD number one. Assistance is the IG function that provides soldiers, family members, Army civilians, retirees, and contract employees the ability to seek help from the IG on matters affecting their health, welfare, and personal readiness. The IG's role is to resolve these issues within the limits of the IG system. The Inspector General Assistance Process, or IGAP, is a seven-step process we use for all assistant cases and investigations. We will provide an example to demonstrate how to use the IGAP. Before we begin, it is important to understand that steps one and two will always be completed, and the outcome of step two will determine how to proceed through the rest of the process. Step one, receive the IGAR. Individuals can file IG complaints by walk-in, visiting their local IG, call-in, email-in, or write-in to include anonymously. Inspectors General provide and use the Department of the Army Form 1559 Inspector General Action Request as the primary intake document to record complaints and requests for information. This form explains the Privacy Act and the consent elections that pertain to the release of personal information and supporting documents outside of IG channels, but within DOD channels. Complainants should submit their complaint using the DA Form 1559 in order to capture pertinent contact information, the specific action requested, key information pertaining to the request, and the complainant's consent elections. A copy of the 1559 is in the toolbox in both DVD number one and this DVD. The IG facilitates the completion of the DA Form 1559 as part of the intake process and utilizes it to explain its confidentiality. The complainant does not necessarily need to request confidentiality. The IG will automatically maintain it. However, IGs never guarantee confidentiality because a legal proceeding or other unforeseen event may require the release of the person's information by law or by the Army IG or another appropriate authority may direct the release for other reasons. When a DA Form 1559 is completed or submitted to the IG, it becomes an IG record. The IG must mark the completed DA Form 1559 properly in accordance with Army Regulation 20-1, Inspector General Activities and Procedures, Chapter 3, and upload it as a supporting case document into the Inspector General Action Request System, or IGARS. The complainant may retain a copy of their DA Form 1559, provided that the copy has not been stamped or marked with IG st standard classifications. Step 2. Preliminary analysis. IGs conduct preliminary analysis to determine if the issue has merit or requires resolution, if the matter is appropriate for IG action, or if the IG should refer the matter to the command or another agency. 
The assistant function is the process of receiving, inquiring into, and responding to complaints, requests for information, and requests for help presented or referred to an IG. This process is used to correct problems indirectly. Now we are going to walk through the process of conducting assistance. It is important to understand that every complaint is different and individual and should be treated that way. IGs need to be understanding and actively listen to the complainant regardless of how simple the complaint may be. Although it may sound simple to the IG, the problem is very serious to the complainant. In this example, Sergeant Anderson will assist Specialist Gaspard with a serious pay problem. Hello, Specialist Gaspar. I'm Sergeant First Class Anderson. How can IG assist you today? Hey, Sergeant Anderson. Uh, I'm here today over a pay issue. I recently arrived in Italy, and it's been three months since I last got paid. My first sergeant uh, called the finance office, and they were not able to solve the problem. So my first sergeant sent me here to see if we could get this uh, issue resolved with IG. He really trusts IG. Okay. Well, of course we can help you. So first thing we'll have you do is fill out the 1559, and you're going to read over the privacy statement and make sure you consent elections and let me know when you're done. Okay. Once complete, Sergeant Anderson reviews the form with Specialist Gaspard. Okay. So I see you filled out the form correctly and that you talked to your chain of command and they weren't able to assist you and that you consented to release both your personal information and supporting documents and that you signed and dated it. So we're going to reach out to you once we get an inquiry done and see what's the next steps to assist you with your pay inquiry. And after that, we'll let you know when we'll contact you again. So is there anything else you would like the IG to do for you, Specialist Gaspar? Uh, no, Sergeant. Thank you very much for your help. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good day. Sergeant Anderson will now talk us through how she conducted step two of the IGAP, preliminary analysis. First, I identified the issue. He wasn't getting paid. Then I determined IG appropriateness. Yes, this request for assistance is appropriate for the office of the IG to handle. Next, I open the case in IGARS, the Inspector General Action Request System, and then put all the information documented on the DA Form 1559 and other information the system requires. Although your country may not have a digital database, we can assist with establishing systems that work for your IG system. The next step would have been to send Specialist Gaspard an acknowledgement of receipt by way of email. But since he came into the office to start his case, acknowledgement was done in person and no additional email was necessary. The next step is for me to select a course of action. My course of action would be to conduct an Inspector General Assistance Inquiry. This end my preliminary analysis. Step three, initiate referrals, make initial notifications. This step determines IG appropriateness. The problem may have to be referred to another Army IG office, another agency such as Criminal Investigations Division, Military Police Investigations, or Civil Authorities, or another command, which requires the commander to assign an investigating officer, non-IG, and conduct the investigation. There are several issues that are not IG appropriate. For example, a soldier doesn't agree with his evaluation. This is not a valid IG request because the Army evaluation process has a redress system. IGs do not evaluate how leaders evaluate their subordinates. In this case, we will give the soldier the information regarding the redress process for evaluations. Then we will go straight to step seven and close the case. If a soldier complaint highlights potential criminal activity as IGs, we refer that to an organization with the proper authorities. Complaints that include sexual harassment or racism are referred to our Army Sexual Harassment and Assault Response Program, or SHARP, Equal Opportunity, Family Advocacy, or Equal Employment Opportunity Programs. When a complainant is referred to another agency, we close the case because our other agencies have programs and oversight mechanisms. IGs do everything we can to reinforce our unit chain of commands. Therefore, if a commander has the ability to resolve an issue, this referral occurs at the lowest level of command appropriate to take the corrective action and the matter is elevated only when deemed appropriate. This process assists in eliminating conditions detrimental to the morale, efficiency, or reputation of the unit and the command. Referrals to the commands are not treated the same as referrals to other agencies because the IG remain as the oversight mechanism. 
referral to the commanders re-enters the IGAP process to step six follow-up. We review the action taken by the commander and ensure it was approved by legal and the issues were addressed. Under normal conditions, we as IGs do not question the commander's decision. As Sergeant Anderson conducted preliminary analysis on Specialist Gaspard's finance problem, she deemed it was IG appropriate. Therefore, we proceed to step four, fact finding. In step four, fact finding, we determine whether the complaint is an assistant inquiry, inspection inquiry, or investigation, or investigative inquiry. Any IG can perform the assistance function. The IG will use the assistance inquiry to address or respond to a complaint involving issues, requests for assistance, or requests for information, but not allegations of impropriety or wrongdoing. During the assistance inquiry, the IG typically gathers information by reviewing applicable policies and standards or by requesting documentation and additional information from the complaining, from the command, or from other agencies within DOD to resolve the issues. It complements the inspections and investigations function of the IG system. However, if an IG determines that an Inspector General inspection, investigative inquiry, or investigation is necessary, he or she must first obtain authority from the directing authority, usually the commanding general. Going into step four, Sergeant Anderson determined that Specialist Gaspar's case was an assistance inquiry. With the information that Specialist Gaspar provided, I determined how to best assist him with his problem. Since his issue was with finance, I determined that contacting the finance office was my first step. I called the finance office and spoke to Mr. Jones. I asked if he was aware of the finance issue that Specialist Gaspar was having, that Specialist Gaspar was not getting paid. He said he was aware and that other soldiers were having the same issue. There was a problem with the new computer system making direct deposits into certain accounts and Specialist Gaspar's account was likely included. I asked Mr. Jones what was being done about it and he stated that the problem was being fixed and that Specialist Gaspar should receive his regular pay and back pay in the next few weeks. I thank Mr. Jones for his assistance. At the completion of fact finding during the systems inquiry, the IG would notify and inform complainant of the results. The notification of results does not necessarily connote resolution of the complaint. The IG will only provide information directly pertaining to that complaint regarding the actions taken to resolve the matter. The complainant does not get to know with whom the IG spoke in order to address the complaint. In some cases, the person presenting the complaint may be a third party and is only authorized by law to receive information directly pertaining to him or her without prior consent from the complainant, unless a Privacy Act exception applies. The IG will record all notifications in the IGAR database and in the case notes. To notify the complainant, Sergeant Anderson calls Specialist Gaspar and notifies him of the information that Mr. Jones gave her regarding his issue. Hello, Specialist Gaspar. This is Sergeant First Class Anderson calling you back from the CTAF IG office. Are you in a place where you can discuss your case? Yes. Great. I have some information on your finance issue. So the problem was with the new computer system, it was making direct deposits into certain accounts and your account was impacted by the issue. Oh, man. I know that, that really is, is bad. But the problem with the computer was it was being fixed and you should receive your regular pay along with some back pay in the next few weeks. That is outstanding. Thank you so much, Sergeant Anderson, for your help. I'm so happy that you're getting your money back and I know you're happy. So is there anything else that you would like for the IG office to assist you with today? No, Sergeant, that is it. Have a blessed day. And you have a blessed day as well. Bye. Step six is follow-up. Follow-up ensures that the IG has thoroughly addressed all issues and or allegations and that the IG's responsibilities have been fulfilled. If you hand off corrective actions to a proponent staff agency, you will probably have to follow up to ensure that problems are fixed. The nature of the case drives your follow-up actions and are independent of the fact-finding process you use. Sergeant Anderson follows up with Specialist Gaspar to see if he received his pay and back pay. He tells her he has received it all and thanks her for her help. Now that Specialist Gaspar's complaint is resolved, we can move to the final step in the IGAP. The final step in the IGAP is close the case. A final reply must be provided to the complainant, 
you must notify the complainant of the approved results, but only for those issues and allegations that directly pertain to the complainant. If the complainant authorizes the release of information to a third party on a DA Form 7433, ensure that you make any additional notifications. Third party complainants are only entitled to know that assistance was conducted and that the appropriate action was taken. The DA Form 7433 is in the toolbox of both DVD. Sergeant Anderson confirmed that Specialist Gaspar's complaint was resolved over the phone and he had no further issues. No further notifications are necessary and she closes the case. In the U.S. Army, we use a digital system called the Inspector General Action Request System, IGARS. Everything I did to resolve Specialist Gaspar's issue is documented in IGARS. It is a confidential system that enables the unit and army to determine trends. While I was assisting the complainant and his pay problem, we discovered it was an issue that was affecting more than just Specialist Gaspar. This resulted in an army level policy change. The Army IG would have done a search on IGARS to determine where the issue was occurring and how common the complaint was. From the trend, they would have moved through an approval process to conduct an Army IG inspection to find the root cause of the finance issue, then recommended the Army G8 resolve the issue. This will fix the issue for the entire Army. The intent of this simulated assistance case was to determine how a case goes from complaint to resolution using the Inspector General action process. The last thing we want to highlight is the importance of confidentiality. The trust that an effective Inspector General system provides is founded in the ability to put forward a complaint and remain reasonably confidential. It is imperative to help prevent reprisal. We can only speak to the U.S. Army system and do not want to insinuate that it is the only way to conduct assistance. Through partnering with your IG offices, we look forward to learning from each other by sharing lessons learned and exchanging processes and procedures. If you are interested in collaborating with the CTEF-AF Office of the Inspector General, please contact the Security Cooperation Officer in the U.S. Embassy in your country. They are the conduit to partnering with our office, attending the U.S. Army Inspector General School, and gaining information on other U.S. programs that USIGs routinely refer complaints for resolution, such as Equal to Opportunity, Sexual Harassment, and RB Substance Abuse programs. Inspectors General provide oversight and access to a multitude of programs to enhance readiness.